I'm Kim Kesty, Creative Director here at Fun Stampers Journey and Spellbinders, and welcome to the Creative Classroom. I'm excited to be here today to share with you our new project tutorial on Ready, Set, Spring. It's our brand new launch from Fun Stampers Journey. Now I'm gonna walk you through all of the projects in your project kit. I'm so happy that you purchased that. I know that you're already probably loving it. Um, so I'm really excited to share all the tips and techniques with you as we produce those four projects. Um, but most importantly, let's take a look at what came in your kit. So we've got, of course, brand new product, which is always pretty much the most exciting part, I think. The card kits are great, but you know, it's all, all about the new product. So we've got this little ATS, which is Happy Spring Minis. Of course, we're gonna be using that. It's got some great sentiments for um, Easter and as we go into spring. And this adorable die set, that's actually the first one we're gonna use today. So cute, bunny trio. And then we've got this matching stamp and die, which is gonna be just a blast. We've got all these fun critters, these gorgeous um, elements, and of course the matching die, so we don't have to fussy cut. How fun will that be? I have a feeling this uh, tutorial is gonna go by nice and quickly, because I don't think we have very much fussy cutting today, so that's super exciting. So what I'm gonna do is grab my Bunny Trio die set, and then let's take a look at actually all four kits, and then I'll show you which one we're gonna start with. So in your project kit also, you get four pre-kitted card projects. So super fun. We've done a lot of the, you know, die cutting already for you and some of the, you know, extra things. So really all you get to do is have fun and create, create, create. So we're gonna grab this kit first. I'll set the other ones aside. So this one has got our cool pool card base and this fun little bag of goodies. Let's just go ahead and break it open now that you know which one you're grabbing first. And of course you're watching this tutorial on a, a broadcast that we've pre-recorded, so you could do the cards in any order you want, of course. So this is just the first one that I chose to pick. Um, this little bag with the little die cuts, we're gonna also set aside just for a minute. And we've got a, a vellum oval here, we could set that aside. We're actually gonna work very, very first on the background. So I want you to take special note here. We've got two whipped cream panels right here, and one is for die cutting and one is for coloring on but you also have another one that's really close in size. So I want you to go ahead and compare these two. Do you see how one becomes a mat for the other? So one is slightly bigger. So what I do not want you to do is color on your one that's prepared for a mat, okay? So you've got two that are this same size, the smaller size. So keep those out, but this one that becomes your card mat, please set it aside and do not use it. So I'm gonna put it like way over here on my card top, on my card desktop. And I am gonna go ahead and fold my card base right here. I really should get a crease tool, I'll get my proper tool here. There we go, so much nicer. Sometimes I even like to go back and crease my card back the other way. It just creates a really nice fold. So this is gonna be kind of a top opening card. So once you have your card base, I can put it together with this mat that I had over there and tuck those aside so we don't color on them. Now, these two are exactly the same. So you could pick one, set one aside for die cutting. Maybe I'll put one with my little bunnies because we're gonna die cut those in a minute. But we're gonna start with this background. Now this is gonna be kind of a DIY plaid background. So you're gonna want some kind of non-porous surface. You actually could use the little clear sheet that comes on the back of your stamps. Um, I'll show you this when I open this, but it comes with a nice little clear sheet, which of course you can use, but I like to use our blocks. They're fabulous, they clean up beautifully and they're just perfect. And then you also wanna grab a square paintbrush. Now we have three different paintbrushes at Fun Stampers Journey. We have a round, an angle, and the square, but I found the square works great for this technique. And we're gonna grab our liquid color because that's what we're doing this technique with. We've got three different colors here. I've got turbo teal, lovely blue, and sweet pear. Typically, I like to do my lightest color first, so I'm gonna start with Sweet Pear. So I'm just putting some on my block here, and this technique I want to be fairly what I call dry brush, so I can go ahead and test it out, you know, on my grid paper a little bit, and see how it's got kind of the brush strokey look? That's really what I want. I don't want it to be super solid. And then I want a horizontal stripe. I know that I'm gonna put another one about two thirds down, so I'm doing about one third from the top. Do your best to get them straight. I know they're not always going to be perfectly straight. Mine never are, but. And I do have just a little cup of plain water. I can kind of 
Rinse my brush just a little bit. I'm gonna go do Turbo Teal next. I'm gonna save my lovely blue for the last because that's gonna kind of fill in my gap. Now I know that this is really a vibrant color, the Turbo Teal, so I'm gonna grab my spray bottle and just add a little bit to kind of water it down. Now I'm gonna do my other stripe at the two thirds mark here. If it's a little bit darker in some spots, totally fine. In fact, the main card, if you saw the project, a uh, postcard, you know it has a vellum overlay too, so don't stress too much about getting it exactly perfect. So again, looking for the brush strokey look. And then like I just said, our last color is gonna kinda be, a, kind of calling out my fill in, fill in the gaps color, and that's lovely blue. And this is really quite pale. I'm not necessarily gonna spritz this, but I'm gonna just use the water for my brush. Again, it kinda blends my colors a little bit more. In fact, I think I'll leave both of these stripes white. I think that adds kind of a cute, like I said, plaid effect. Okay, so now what you wanna do is you wanna let this guy dry, which is kinda why we worked on it first. So I'm gonna set it aside and let it dry while we work on some of our die cutting. Now's the time to pull your other white panel out and let that guy dry. And you're gonna wanna grab your die set. It's so cute, you guys are gonna love it. And one more item that you probably want to grab is your little panel of pool play. You've got our three bunnies. The other two dies are the little words that say Happy Easter. And these you wanna cut out both from the pool play. Now I'm gonna grab my card base back again and my larger mat. I think I might as well go ahead and adhere this so I don't mix it up with anything else. And then this guy, this doesn't take too long to dry. If you want to accelerate the drying, you can go ahead and hit it with a heat gun, which I have right here. Maybe I'll do that for just a second so I can adhere this on. And we'll get going. All right, so you just wanna definitely make sure it's nice and dry before you adhere it to your hard base. You might have noticed when I was drying it with the heat gun that I kinda of did both sides and that's because the paper might tend to curl a little bit when you're drying it quickly. So you wanna bring in your uh, vellum oval and this is where we're gonna kind of start adhering things and layering them, but of course, as you know, if you put regular glue on this vellum, it's gonna show. So we're gonna kind of strategically place our elements and then hide our glue underneath. Does that sound fun? Go start with my sentiment because again, if you're looking at the postcard, you can see that the, every other element is kind of grouped around the main sentiment. So first I'm gonna add the sentiment to the vellum and then I'm gonna adhere all the other elements grouped around. In order to hide the glue, I'm gonna add glue on the back of the vellum just where the sentiment already is. Kind of arrange them where you want them and then the bunnies are popped up with little foam squares. So once I kind of figure out where I want them, I can add my foam squares. Okay, now I can come in with my little bag of treasures here. And we've got some flowers and leaves and pearls, all the fun things. And most importantly, your three little bunny tails. These are part of a accessory we have here at Fun Stamper's Journey called Palm Minis. I'll do my bunny tails first. Your die cut does have obviously little tails on the bunny. Now you've got your little spring blooms here. I can sh I, I like to shape them a little bit with my finger. Not You don't have to worry about it a whole lot, but I'm gonna put also a little bit of glue underneath this vellum. I'm gonna do this flower flat, and then my next two flowers I'm gonna use a little pop adhesive square. So it's all about dimension, just kind of play, have fun. Now you've got one branch that's die cut and it does have five leaves on it. So you can kind of trim this, you know, in whatever steps you want to add little leaves underneath your flower. So you can just trim the individual leaves away and just add a little bit of glue underneath and just kind of tuck them in here and there. Okay, double check your card, make sure everything looks good. It's right where you want it. And then you can add your three little pearls. We do have one finishing touch to add to our sentiment, but I kind of like to get everything else in place first. All right, we're so close. So now you wanna grab your journey glaze. Um, this is of course the fun glaze that we carry that's got a little bit of dimension to it and it's got a quite a narrow little spout. So you should be able to kind of come in and trace your sentiment and just take your time, go a little slow and then you just wanna kind of go right over that die cut. And it's gonna add a little bit of shine and a little bit of dimension to your sentiment. And it is perfectly adorable like this, but I thought, you know what? It's an Easter card. So we went ahead and included just a little bit of our sparkle dust and a little baggie for you here. 
And I'm gonna caution you to use this sparingly because it's really pretty and it's really vibrant. Because all you need is a little sprinkle. One pinch is going to be plenty. And then of course I'm gonna gently tap this and get some of the excess glitter away. And check it out. It was pretty before, but it's just a little bit sparkly now and it's all so sweet. So I absolutely love how that one turned out. So fun, and again, I wish I was there crafty with all of you so I could see all of your fun backgrounds and how everyone's is a little bit different. But congratulations on finishing card number one. Um, I'll go ahead and freeze this screen right here just for a minute in case you wanna pause the video and catch up and get ready to start card number two. We'll be right back. Okay, well, all ready for card number two. I hope so, that first one was really fun. Uh, for card number two, we're gonna use the same die we just used, so the bunny trio. You wanna grab that out and make sure that's handy. And the card kit you're looking for now is this yummy one with all this pink, as my daughter would say, pinkalicious. So I'm gonna pull everything out of here. Of course, you've got your card base. I might just go ahead and quickly fold that. This time, this is gonna make a square card, which is kind of fun, a little change of pace. All right, and we've also got in this, and this is fun because we've got this die cut already done, and this is the from the Becca Fecan Hemstitch dies. This guy, we're gonna put a little bit of color on it. I'm gonna bring my clear block back in. This time we're gonna add some bubblegum silk, and you will see that it has this really fun metallic. And it kind of tends to settle at the bottom, so be sure to shake it up a little bit. So I can just go ahead and take the brush applicator, what's on it, and you do wanna dilute this. We're looking for kind of a fun watercolor smooshing effect here. So I'm gonna take my die cut, and I'm gonna lay it face down into my little puddle, and that's really it. So we'll let it dry, and it will dry slightly lighter than it shows right now. So we'll just set that aside, and then we'll bring in our kit pieces again, and do a little bit of die cutting. Got a little piece of our mirror gold in there, which is really fun. And this time we're just gonna cut two bunnies out, the one that's kind of standing and the one that's kind of sitting. So this little brush gold you have here is not quite as shiny as the mirror. So this is where we're gonna be stamping our sentiment. So you wanna pull out your new, smaller size stamp set. And we call these ATSs here at Fun Stamper's Journey. Let me just grab it out of the packaging so it's not so shiny. So this is a little bit smaller than our standard set. Super fun for collecting, great price point, and you still have all these fun sentiments on here. Do you remember what I was talking about clear sheets earlier? Well, there's one right there that you can save and reuse for a project. And for this particular card, we're going to be using the circle, the large circle that says all things are possible, which is why we pre-die cut this circle just for you. So I'm gonna center it on my block. And one tip for stamping with uh, rubber stamps, you wanna get the stamp as close as possible to the size of the block. So just one extra little tip. The smallest block that will fit your stamp is like the most ideal. Just helps you stamp a little bit more evenly. So I'm gonna be embossing this. So I'm using our clear pigment ink. So I wanna ink it up quite well with the clear pigment. And we do have the index, and of course you can get in there and try to get it as close as you can to the center of that circle. It shouldn't be too difficult. This is uh, just gold embossing powder. And I'm usually generous with my powder. I kind of like to sprinkle it all over, and then I can just make sure the excess goes right back in the jar. So now we can see that the clear pigment ink worked out quite well. Let me move this powder right here so I can do my embossing. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my bloom tool right here and I'm going to just hold it down with a point of it so this doesn't blow all over. You could use a little clothespin, you could use tweezers, whatever you have to kind of hold it in place while you do the heat embossing. Isn't that fun? I love, I'll never get tired of watching that powder melt and it just becomes so pretty and shiny. And you can see that I did heat it quite well because when you have this much surface area with this much powder, you definitely wanna make sure it's well heated. And then this little sentiment's gonna snuggle right between my two little die cut bunnies there. I'm gonna come in with my watercolor panel. It's getting dry, but not quite. So let me just hit it one more time with my heat gun and I 
Now you could put this under a book for a few minutes or something like that, but I'm just gonna kind of, I'll use the edge of my ink pad and kind of rub it a little bit. We are gonna put quite a few foam squares on the back so that'll kind of help hold it down too. Now before we start assembling the card, I'm gonna go ahead and get my white mat here and my card base. Now before I actually add this piece and start adding my foam squares, I'm gonna add my ribbon to this panel first. So before you stick it to your card, don't forget to add your ribbon and tie yourself a sweet little bow. I'm tying my bow so it goes a little bit on the right side of this die cut. Now, funnily enough, because this is a bunny card, I do use bunny ears when I'm doing my satin ribbon uh, because one side is shinier than the other. So I do go ahead and make two bunny ears, kind of like the way you learned in kindergarten. That way I know that my pretty satiny, shiny side of my ribbon is gonna be sticking out. Okay, so now when I add my foam squares on the back, that will all stay in place and it'll actually help hold the ribbon in place too. So I'll be sure to put a foam square kind of right over each ribbon piece there. What you don't want to do is have any foam square kind of peeking out behind your hem stitch there. I know I did tell you I was going to use a lot of foam squares. <laughs> and then these elements really are quite easy to finish up. I'll use probably both sides of my foam squares. I'm going to do the sentiment first because this is going a little bit higher on my card and then I'll know where to put each bunny on either side and I am kind of overlapping my bunny on the sentiment there so just kind of place them wherever you think looks adorable. I know it'll be cute no matter what and I love this pink and gold combination for a kind of a little bit different Easter card. And then all you have left to finish this one is just adding a few of your fashion gold dots, which you have plenty, probably more than you'll actually end up using on the card. So that one was actually quite easy. That's card number two, fun little square card. I think you'll love it with all the little shiny surfaces on there. Absolutely adorable for a fun Easter card. And I love the sentiment too. That's one of my favorites. So I'll let that sit there so you can catch up if you need to. And we'll be right back for card number three. Alrighty, moving right along here. We're ready for project number three. So we're halfway through our make and take tutorial. Having fun as always, crafting away with you. Uh, for this next card, we're gonna need one of our other brand new stamp sets and it's called Joyful Greetings. So again, let me grab the plastic off so it's easier to see. And we've got all this prettiness here. We've got all these fun little critters. For this particular card, we're only using the egg right now, but you're gonna have so much fun with all these different little images on this stamp set. 16 different sets, uh, stamps on this set, including three adorable greetings. And then, like I said, for this next card, we're gonna just need the egg. You'll wanna grab the egg die also. So the kit that you wanna grab next from your project kit is this one with the grass and the little polka dots and the banana cream card base. I think your card base is actually already pre-folded. I think we ended up deciding to pre-fold this for you so yours might already be done. And while I've got this card base, I think that we might as well go ahead and adhere our pattern paper. So we've got that guy done. We'll just set him aside for a minute. And let's go through the rest of our kit here. We've got this grass die cut we'll use when we start layering our little goodie pack with our pin. This little guy's gonna be for our sentiment, so I'll keep that handy. I'm gonna stamp our sentiment in just a minute. And then you've got a wider and a narrower piece of whipped cream. Now the narrow piece we're gonna use for a, an additional mat. So if you grab your card base, you'll notice that it's sized perfectly to go right down the middle of your card. So definitely set that one aside. In fact, let's just skip a step and go ahead and adhere it. Then we won't make a mistake. So just kind of center it, it'll go top to bottom. So now you've got this big piece left and that's gonna be the one you're gonna stamp all your fun little eggs. Now I'm gonna do three different eggs and each egg is gonna have a combination of two different inks. You'll see that all of our inks come in really fun, amazing coordinating colors and I'm choosing to do two different inks on each egg. All of my color combos are gonna be exactly done exactly the same way. So we'll start with watermelon. And then I'm gonna take sweet berry, which is slightly darker, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of ink on the edge of my egg. These two pinks are probably the closest in shade of all the color combinations I'm doing, so it doesn't show up a ton on here. Um, I think it shows up more in real life, but you can definitely see it's lighter in the middle, and then you've got the darker around the edge. Now I'll come in with peaches and cream. This one you'll notice the contrast a little bit more. And on the edge, I'm gonna come in with orange creamsicle. Again, not getting a lot of ink on the center, of course, of the orange creamsicle. Yep, that one definitely showed up. The contrast a little bit more, I love it. Now my last one is gonna also show up pretty good. This one is Cool Pool. And then I'm going to do Beach Breeze on the edge. 
All right, isn't that one pretty? Again, that shows the contrast a little bit more. Okay, now we're just gonna take our egg die cut and just go along and die cut each of our eggs out. Now we have our three fun little eggs done and we've got a little bit of grass going on. So we're gonna use the sentiment from the Happy Spring Minis. We're gonna grab this one again and we're gonna do this really pretty Happy Easter. So again, this is kind of nice to also take advantage of those grid lines. Kind of line up your stamp. So I'm gonna use clear pigment ink and then I'm gonna add some white embossing powder. I wanna leave a little bit of room to do a little banner cut on the side. So just kind of center your sentiment more or less. Do you have a little spare paintbrush? Usually handy, so if I get any extra powder, I can kind of brush it away. Usually not too bad, it doesn't stick too much. And then we'll grab our heat gun and heat emboss the sky. All right, so now we'll bring our card base back in. I am gonna grab this little guy and I said cut a little banner cut on the one side and then I do want to grab some foam dots or foam squares here too and then I'll kind of play with my placement a little bit and decide where I want my eggs to go you can put them in any order you want I think my grass is going to come right in here somewhere and then you can kind of go piece by piece and add your foam squares and get your little card elements in place So you can see that I kind of assembled it from the top down and added my foam squares and just kind of placed them and got them all snuggled together there until they were just how I wanted it. Now you can grab your little fun bag of goodies here. Let's go ahead and get everything out from here. First thing you've got is one of these great little uh, paper clips. We call them the fun day elements and of course the little bunny figure is absolutely perfect for this card, so he's gonna kind of tuck in there. Got some pearls, I'll do those last. And you've got a length of lemongrass twine here, or thread. I'm gonna cut off one little piece to thread my button. So you wanna reserve one little piece for that. And then with the rest of this, you can tie a triple bow, which we do have separate videos that show this really in slow motion in a really easy way. Basically, you're going to do a figure eight around your little fingers here at least three times. Of course, that makes the triple bow. And then you kind of dive your extra length down and actually wrap it one more time to make a knot. Like I said, we've got great videos online that show how to do this really slow motion. So you will be able to master it. So now you have a fun little bow with only two tails, but three loops. And you should have plenty of twine left over. I am gonna end up just kind of gluing these guys on, because I'm gonna add my little button on top, and then I'll just use one blast of glue to hold it all together. I could tuck my little bow in there, but since I'm gluing it, I don't really need to. But if you wanted to, you could tie that around your bow also. All right, and the last thing we have to do is add our fun little pearls. You can put these anywhere. I'm just gonna kind of add them up right above my eggs here. So I won't tip this card too much because obviously my bow is still drying there, but I think it turned out super cute. I love how the egg stamping came out. Hope you had fun with that. I'll go ahead and leave this um, kind of in a little freeze frame here for a minute. I'll let you get caught up and then we will start card number four. And welcome back for our fourth and last card. This has been so much fun. Now your last kit that you have is the only one left, so it's pretty easy to figure out. We've got this fun, sweet pear card background, or card base, I should say. And then lots and lots of whipped cream pieces. So we'll just quickly pull them out and take a look. Go ahead and fold my card base. Now keep your crease tool handy because we're going to need that in just a minute for one of our fun techniques. Now you've got a die cut piece, that'll be pretty easy to keep separate, and a little banner piece. Actually I did bring the product that we cut this from, I wanted to just share it with you real quick. 
because it's such a fun little um, Spellbinders die. This is called Ribbon Banners, and it's got four great ribbons. They're just super fun. Now we're using this one right here, which we turned it around for our card, so it faces this way, but um, I just thought this would be fun to share. Although we did pre-die cut it for you in case you wanted to check it out and maybe use some of these other ones for future projects. This uh, SKU number is S4324. So ribbon banners, if you want to check that out on the website. Uh, but like I said, you do have that die cut, so we can set that aside. Now you've got a couple different sizes of whipped cream here. You've got two smaller ones that we're going to use to do our bunnies. So they're two smaller, exactly the same. We're going to stamp two bunnies. We can set that aside. We don't need those right now. And this guy is for, the first one is for a, a card mat. Let me go ahead and pull, pull it on here. So the bigger one is going to just create a nice mat for your card. So we can go ahead and if you want to just compare those two, you can see one is slightly smaller. Let's go ahead and adhere this bigger one on because again, then we won't kind of make a mistake. So that goes right down the center of your card and that becomes your card mat. This is the one that we're gonna have a fun um, time doing a technique with and then eventually it's gonna go right on top. So it becomes a second mat. And what you're gonna want to do is grab some kind of a non-porous surface. Anything that's maybe got a little bit of a lip around because we are going to have fun with some shaving cream. Buy your cheapest, plainest shaving cream you can find. Of course, you want to shake it up just a little bit. Now I'm creating basically what amounts to kind of a rectangle shape. Now I do use my crease tool to kind of smooth it out just a little bit, fill in any gaps that are on there. And you want it, you know, fairly thick. This will be enough to do more than one card base. So I've actually got an extra scrap of whipped cream cardstock. So you might want to do several what I call prints with them. So what we're going to do is we're going to add Cool Pool Liquid Color to our shaving cream that we've got in our dish. So I'm just gonna kind of move this around a little bit, kind of swirling it. Again, and you can experiment with more color, less color. Um, I've even seen really fun techniques where you combine a couple of colors. Now you can go all one direction, you can go several directions, but I generally like to kind of go across and then back the other way. Now don't move this color too much in here because honestly you're gonna, you don't wanna mix it up too much. You're gonna lose that fun marble effect. So I'm just gonna dunk it into my shaving cream and I wanna tap it down. Then I'm gonna take the edge of my crease tool that I have right here and just come along and scrape that color away. You might wanna scrape a little bit more off the edge. Just get most of the excess shaving cream off. And there we go. We've got a really fantastic marbly effect. Now, like I said, I'm gonna bring this back in and just for funsies do another piece with my extra cardstock I have. It's gonna be Probably a little bit lighter. It'll be a fun experiment. And this is like some other techniques we've shown where everyone turns out different and there's just really not a wrong way to do it. All right, we're gonna let those dry for a minute. I'll let you go ahead and play and experiment and let you get your prints done and we'll be right back. Your two panels will not really take very long to dry, but set them aside in a safe space and we will go ahead and start our stamping. So you wanna bring in your Joyful Greeting stamp set this time we're going to do both of our bunnies. So we'll go ahead and grab both of those out. We've got one kind of facing this way and then his little pal facing this way. And then because they're little buddies, I also want to grab the tiny little heart stamp out. So those are the three we'll need right now. And like I said, we've got two different scraps of our panels of whipped cream. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you a little bit different stamping technique that I haven't really shown on a video, I think for quite a long time. And that's using our Creative Palette. Now this is a fun refillable ink pad, which means that it comes blank with no ink inside. Now you can use two different inks for this refillable pad. You can use our standard reinker, which comes, of course, in all of our matching ink colors for our True Color Fusion ink. You can get those in all of our shades. I think there's 50 different shades that we have at Fun Stamper's Journey. So you can buy the little ray inkers and just create any rainbow palette that you want with this customizable ink pad. And the other ink that you can use is what I'm going to be using today and that's our liquid color. So let me grab those. I've got a fun kind of monochromatic color palette going on here. I'm going to show you exactly how I'm going to accomplish that. So we've got, I'm going to put the five here so you can check them out. And of course, they're also on your supply list on your postcard, but we've got at this end, Sweet Pear going into Limeade. Our darkest shade is in the middle. That's Fresh Forest. Then we go to Fresh Sage and Cool Pool. So that's the order that I'm going to be filling them on the ink pad. 
And the liquid color is just really like any other stamping ink, except it is water-based. So it's definitely gonna be um, a little bit juicier as you apply it to that ink pad. Okay, so I'm not too worried if any of the inks just slightly bleed into each other. Because they are water-based, they're gonna kind of do that anyway when I start stamping. Um, but that's actually what I want. I kind of want these colors to be, you know, enough monochromatic that they can kind of blend together and then it's gonna be a really amazing stamped effect. So there's my creative palette loaded with um, liquid color. And honestly, the hardest part of this process is remembering to label your ink pad so you can remember which colors you used. So it's really not difficult. Anybody can do that. And so when I go in to ink this little bunny, I'm gonna go ahead and start pretty much in the center of the ink pad because I wanna get that full range of color. But then I'm also gonna slightly move my ink uh, or my stamp up and down just a little bit so it can pick up all those colors and like I said, slightly blend those colors together. So isn't that just gorgeous? I absolutely love how the colors just blend and play together. And then I do let the ink, the rubber stamp just sit on my paper for just a fraction longer than maybe I normally would with a normal ink pad. So I've got my little D block here, one of my favorites. It's only about an inch square. And I'm gonna just stamp the heart up in the corner here so I'll have room to die cut it. Now you're not gonna get a lot of variation in your heart, so just kind of go with whatever shade you like from your palette. And we just need one little heart there. So now these guys are ready to go. I'm just gonna bring in my die cutting machine and grab the matching dies. All right, so we've got our sweet little bunnies there. We'll bring in a few more pieces of our card base. We've got our little sentiment to stamp, and I've got a little tip to share on that one, so let me do that. We're gonna grab this long, skinny sentiment here that says, Sending Easter Wishes. Now what I'm gonna attempt to do is just slightly bend the end of the stamp so that it has a little slight curve. Now rubber stamps, you know, you can't bend too far because then they'll just pop back, but you are able to just slightly bend the ends, especially on a long, slim sentiment like this. I think it just gives it a little, little extra pizzazz. Okay, so now we've got this base and let's check our two panels that we did. Love both of them, I don't even know. I think I'll just use the original, but this one's gonna be really great for a future project too. And again, they don't take super long to dry, so I don't have to dry this anymore with a heat gun or anything. Just kind of smooth it out a little bit. This is also not popped up on your card panel, so you can use a little bit of extra adhesive and that'll just make sure it lies really flat. Be generous with your adhesive there. Okay, and then we're gonna grab this piece which has already been die cut for you and it's got just this fun little detail on the edge. So it's just got this fun little like stitched embossed edge on it. So I think that's really sweet. And again, this is going just pretty much centered. I'm gonna do it a little bit higher than center because I wanna make sure I have room for my sentiment below. And then sometimes these foam squares, you've seen me do it before if you watch me demo. I like to cut them in half. Your sentiment, you can either have your sentiment overlapping, I think I'm gonna give it a little bit of breathing room. And then of course our darling bunnies, one on either side. They're gonna be pretty snuggly, so I kinda wanna make sure they're pretty tight on there. Just enough room for the heart in the middle. Just need a little tiny square for that heart. And it's really coming together, so cute. So we just have a few of our extra little uh, meadow pearls right here. You can kinda place them wherever on here. And check it out, so pretty you guys. I know that yours is just as pretty. I just wish I could see it, be right there with you. This is really the next best thing, but if you've had fun crafting with me, I'll go ahead and leave that there for just a second in case you need to pause it. And then I'll grab all four of our cards so we can take one last look. All right, let's take one last look at our four projects that we created today. Let me lay them out here. Oh my gosh, they're all so cute. Put this one down here, it fits better. So look at that, you guys. You guys are amazing. I love, love, love crafting with you and giving you some little tips and tricks as you start into your spring session of crafting here. I hope that you've enjoyed our video tutorial today. And as always, you can check out our website at spellbinderspaperarts.com. You can click on Fun Stamper's Journey to see all of our new products. And of course, check everything on the website. There's always something new to check out. I hope you have a great day and in the meantime, as always, enjoy bringing paper to life.